There were many cases where people do not know about them and end up in trouble. The fourth problem is something that often happened in Kyoto where there are many Maiko and Geiko working. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. It seems that Japan, the most backward country in the world, is finally reviving tourism little by little. As a man who used to work in the tourism industry and seriously loved my job there, I couldn't be happier. However, it seems there are many people who are worried about coming to Japan that is opening its borders for the first time in two years and is often said to be a xenophobic country. So today, I will introduce the major troubles that used to happen in five different situations in Japan when tourism was still active. The troubles will be more related to unique customs in Japan towards the end, so I hope you can enjoy the full video. I hope this video will be useful for anyone coming to Japan, not only for those coming for tourism. However, there is just one thing I need to make very clear before I start. The rules I will introduce include some that Japanese people often break a lot, and some that may be considered common sense anywhere in the world. However, they were actually things that became problems in Japan, so I have included them in the list. If there's anything else you'd like to know before coming to Japan, please let me know in the comments. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's go! One, trouble on the streets. Then first, let's start taking a look at the five troubles that often happened on the streets. One, smoking outside of designated areas. Two, littering on the streets. Three, eating while standing. Four, sitting down on the streets. Five, randomly parking bicycles. First, about smoking. Smoking restrictions in Japan have become more strict over the years. And as a rule, smoking is only allowed in designated areas. For breaking these rules, there is a high risk you will be fined. If you want to smoke though, you can easily find the designated areas online. As an example, I'll have a link to the Kyoto's website in the description box. Next, littering on the streets was also a big problem. I'm sure why many tourists tend to litter on the streets is because Japan hardly has any public trash cans. This is to avoid disrupting the landscape and preventing terrorist attacks. Most Japanese are used to taking their trash home, but I'm sure many people feel uncomfortable holding on to trash or keeping it in their bags. However, this actually isn't such a big problem because Japan has convenience stores almost on every block and those stores will always have garbage cans in them. In other words, if you have trash you want to throw away from what you've bought at the convenience store, it's quicker to find the nearest convenience store instead of looking for it on the street. The third is eating while standing on the streets. In many cases, it is forbidden to eat cup noodles or rice balls bought at the convenience stores outside, or to eat food bought at a shopping street directly on the side of the road. It is understandable that shopping streets prohibit this in order to prevent the streets from getting crowded. However, there seems to be a difference of opinion among Japanese as to whether or not eating in front of convenience stores or eating while walking are bad matters. While many young people in their 20s and younger are not bothered by it, many older people consider it misbehaving and offensive. Perhaps they're afraid it may lead to littering. The fourth is sitting down on the streets. Many Japanese consider the act of sitting on the side of the road as a very vulgar act. There are a variety of reasons, such as simply looking dirty or looking like a beggar. In fact, many of the Japanese who actually sit in in Japan tend to be social misfits, like juvenile delinquents, like you might have seen in anime and movies. It may be painful when you are tired, but please try to look for a rest area with benches nearby. Lastly, the fifth trouble is randomly parking bicycles. In Japan's urban areas, major tourist attractions are often within bicycling distance. 
Therefore, it is fun to explore Japan by renting a bike and enjoying cycling. However, when it is time to get off the bike and head somewhere, many people seem to just leave it somewhere randomly on the streets. Just like how smoking needs to be done in designated areas, bicycles must also be parked in designated bicycle parking areas. 2. Trouble at restaurants Next, let me introduce the troubles that often happen at restaurants. 1. Visiting without a reservation 2. Canceling reservations without a call 3. Bringing in food and beverages of course, there are restaurants like chains in Japan too. They can just go without a reservation, but it's generally better to let them know in advance. It seems there were some people who got into a fight with the restaurant for going without a reservation and not being able to eat inside. However, in many cases, the restaurant staff don't speak any English. So it's best to ask the staff of your hotel or ryokan to make a reservation for you. And another thing that often caused trouble is guests not going to the restaurants they reserved. Despite the fact that food was prepared because of reservations received, customers did not show up, resulting in a large amount of waste. I think this is a very difficult problem though. Because when you're traveling, something irregular might happen, or you might simply get lost and not make it in time. So I'm pretty sure there were many people who accidentally couldn't go and didn't have any way to contact the restaurant. Lastly, there were some people who brought their own food to eat at a restaurant. If customers did this, they would lose sales because this means that customers who do not order will be taking up the seats. This is a major problem considering the management of the restaurant. If there are special requirements for children, for example, it would be helpful to inform the restaurant in advance to avoid problems. 3. Trouble on buses and trains Since Japan has tons of manners for riding trains too, there were many cases where people do not know about them and end up in trouble. The following three things tend to be especially problematic for travelers. 1. Carrying large bags on their backs 2. Eating and drinking 3. Making phone calls and sending voice messages When traveling on a long journey, it is natural to have a lot of luggage. However, trains in urban areas in Japan are often crowded, and large backpacks carried on the back may squeeze others. It is best to use the luggage storage area above the seats as much as possible, but also to lower your backpacks and tuck them in between your legs. And of course, it is not a good idea to put down your luggage on the seats next to you. If you are lucky to find a seat, please place your luggage on your lap. Next, you should refrain from eating and drinking on trains. Because we are not allowed to eat the things we bought at convenience stores outside, you might want to sit down on trains to relax and enjoy the food and drinks you bought. However, the smell might disturb others, and there are risks of spilling something too. Lastly, as it is often discussed, you are not allowed to make phone calls and send voice messages on buses and trains. A lot of Japanese people too think that this rule is troublesome, but it is seen as a taboo because you should be as quiet as possible on trains. But it's strange because there's tons of people talking with each other, but somehow making a phone call might make the train staff or other passengers angry. Although it may seem inconvenient, I would recommend you to refrain doing so to avoid problems. 4. Trouble at tourist sites Then next, let's take a look at the troubles that often happened at the tourist sites that I believe that many of you are looking forward to visiting too. 1. Filming in prohibited areas 2. Not taking off hats and sunglasses 3. Not taking off shoes 4. Troubling Maiko and Geisha Compared to other tourist destinations around the world, Japan seems to have especially many places where you are not allowed to take pictures. Not only at museums, but many people don't realize they aren't allowed to take pictures at some shrines and temples. This is because some people believe that the act of taking pictures in front of the gods or Buddha is disrespectful. 
Therefore, it would be great if you could double check whether the area is not a prohibited area for taking any pictures. The second trouble was also something that often happened at shrines and temples. Shrines and temples are like churches and mosques in other religions, and are considered sacred places where gods reside or believers practice the doctrines. So some people say that it's against the manners to not remove your hats and sunglasses in such places. Of course I believe that it's much more polite to remove them, and I myself always do so. However, I think this may be harmful for some of you. For example, Japan's summer is really hot and humid. Some people may feel sick if they have to remove their hats and sunglasses for a long time. I personally think that you could just take it off when you're going to pray at the main shrine or hall. The third trouble is also something that I often experienced when I was working in the tourism industry. Of course, no one has any bad intentions, but they don't realize that they have to take off their shoes there and enter the room. Some people apologized to me a hundred times when I pointed it out for them. This is like having someone walking on your bed with their shoes on, so it tends to become a problem with Japanese people. In order to avoid such trouble, we must keep in mind that in Japan, we almost always take off our shoes when we're inside a building or room. In addition, there's some visual points in the building where shoes must be removed, such as a step, a different type of floor, or a shoe box nearby. If you are worried, you can immediately ask the staff around you. The fourth problem is something that often happened in Kyoto where there are many Maiko and Geiko working. I know how it feels to be thrilled to see a Maiko you've only seen in anime or movies actually walking the streets. I myself have been living in Kyoto for more than 10 years now, but I still feel very excited too when I see them on the streets. However, in the past, there have been problems with people taking pictures or even touching their hair and kimono without permission, which became a huge problem. When Maiko are wearing their kimono and makeup, most of the time they are usually on their way to work. In other words, such interference is not only disrespectful, but could cause the Maiko to be late for work. Some people probably thought that taking just one picture is nothing to fuss about. However, the Maiko walking outside are just normal people like you and me, and we need to imagine what it would feel like suddenly being surrounded by strangers and having your pictures taken. If you really want to talk or take pictures with Maiko, please make a reservation for an experience where you can meet them. My recommended experiences are written in the description box. 5. Trouble at Onsen Hot Springs Finally, it is the rules at the Japanese onsen that are the least informed and are most prone to trouble. Although it may seem a bit of a hassle, there are various rules in place to ensure that everyone can take a bath peacefully. Among them, these are the three that cause problems the most. 1. Going into the bathtub without rinsing your body. 2. Dipping towels and hair in the bathtub. 3. Returning to the changing room dripping wet. I totally understand the feeling of being excited the moment you see the big bathtub and wanting to get in right away. However, you must first get yourself clean at the shower booths. This is because the bathtubs are shared with everyone, and you might make others uncomfortable. By the way, after actually washing up in the shower area, it is important to remember to put back the utensils you've used. Now it's finally time to go into the bathtub but you need to be careful to not dip any towels or long hair into the water. Some people might use the towels to wash their bodies, and they still might include some of the soap they used. Also about the hair, this is because no matter how well they are washed, they still may have some dandruff on them, or they may fall extra into the water. Those with long hair should tie their hair up. And those with short hair should avoid dipping their hats all the way into the bathtub like a swimming pool. And finally, when it's time to leave the onsen, be sure to not return dripping wet to the changing room. If you do, the floor will get wet and it'll be dangerous and dirty for others. This is why you must bring a face towel to the onsen so you can at least wipe yourself to the point that you're not dripping. Afterwards, you can go back to the changing room to use a larger towel to dry yourself up even more. By the way, I've introduced 
five more taboos at onsen in the past. So if you're interested, you can check out that video too. Shogo, this is way too tiresome. Can I just relax in the bath? I'm sure many of you are thinking this way. If so, my recommendation is to choose a private onsen. It will be smaller and less impressive than public hot springs, but you don't have to worry about the detailed rules, and couples and families will be able to enter together. Also, the fact that people with tattoos can also enter is a great merit. When looking for a ryokan, we recommend you to look for one that has a private onsen. So, I've introduced the troubles that used to happen in Japan. But finally, I want to tell you one more time. This video is only to say that these things have happened in the past and is only meant to help those who are anxious to avoid them. Tons of Japanese people are breaking these rules. And it's the Japanese fault in the first place that we lack language skills to explain them clearly. So I don't want anyone to be over worried. And in the end, please just simply enjoy your stay in Japan. If there are anything else you're worried about, feel free to leave comments here or send me a DM through Instagram. I hope that your journey in Japan will be a wonderful one that you will never forget. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduced the troubles that often happen between tourists and Japanese locals. 1. Trouble on the streets 1. Smoking outside of designated areas 2. Littering on the streets 3. Eating while standing 4. Sitting in on the streets 5. Randomly parking bicycles 2. Trouble at restaurants 1. Visiting without reservation 2. Canceling reservations without call 3. Bringing in food and beverages 3. Trouble on trains 1. Carrying large bags on their backs 2. Eating and drinking 3. Making phone calls and sending voice messages 4. Trouble at tourist sites 1. Filming in prohibited areas 2. Not taking off hats and sunglasses 3. Not taking off shoes 4. Troubling Maiko and Geisha 5. Trouble at onsen hot springs 1. Going into the bathtub without rinsing your body 2. Dipping towels and hair in the bathtub 3. Returning to the changing room dripping wet so that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought this video is informative to watch before coming to Japan, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And our goal is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in our next video. So guys, uh, there was one thing while I was uh, recording today's video, I found out one thing that I needed to make clear about um, eating and drinking on trains that it's not a good thing to do. Um, one thing that I need to make really clear is that on Shinkansen, on the bullet trains, you are completely free to eat or drink if you want to. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the staff on the Shinkansen, the bullet trains, are literally selling things to eat, <laughs> eat and drink you know, on the trains. And by the way, eating and drinking, of course, like if you're completely dehydrated, if you just really want a quick sip of water, for example, that's completely fine too. Yeah, it's not that completely strict. I think it's more of the eating. Like, like people, there were some people, like for example, if you start eating McDonald's on a train, you know, the whole, you know, car is going to be filled with that smell, right? Yeah, that kind of stuff. So that would, might be a little bit disturbing for some people. Yeah, but on Shinkansen, there's much more space. You know, one car is much bigger than regular trains and such. And because the, the train ride itself is really, really long, yeah. Even if you go out to outside of the sitting areas, to the bathroom areas, or where you can wash your hands and such, you're even allowed to make a phone call if you wanted to on Shinkansen bullet trains. So I just wanted to add that information for you that um, the situation is a little bit different for the bullet trains. And maybe on the um, the really long trains too that you are, you, you stay in for the, for the whole night kind of trains those are a little bit special but more of the uh, the local transportations like the um, the local trains local buses these will be ha these will have the rules that I explained applied you know in this video so I just wanted to make that one last point uh, clear and I really really hope um I don't know too much about the um, the newest information about how tourism is going on and such but I'm really hoping that the restrictions will get on um, lighter I guess less you know in the near future and I really hope uh, you can enjoy coming to Kyoto I, I myself am really really looking forward to that